Hello everyone, welcome back to the series. In today's video we will focus on the target dummy. I'll show you how to create the different animation states and how can we control it based on our character's interactions. So let's get started. So first select the target dummy and in the inspector add the animator component. Open the controller. In the animator window first go to the parameters tab and add two triggers. We will need these ones to play the different animation based on if it needs to activate itself or die. So call one of them uh, activate and the other one death. So on the base layer we will need free state for this object. First we need an idle animation which will be automatically played by the animator. Then we will need an activate state when we trigger it by one of our action, for example walk into a trigger area. And finally, uh, that state when we hit the object. So let's start with the idle animation. In this tutorial, we don't need really any fancy animations. So I use a little trick for this one. All we need to do is go to the asset, training dummy, mesh. And if you open up the training dummy FBX file, then you can see a died and a pushed animation. Select the died animation and push Ctrl D to duplicate it. Rename this one to idle. So why are we doing it? If you play the died animation, you can see at the end it just lies on the ground. So we can use these keyframes to use it as an idle state when it's lying on the ground. So open up the idle animation and select everything except the last frame and delete it. And then select the last frame and drag it to the front. Save this one and close it up. Now head back to the animator window and create these states. First create an idle, so right click create empty, I'm going to rename it to idle and I'm going to set it a, a default layer and we can delete the push animation and I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it activate and we can rename the died animation to dead. So in the idle state drag the idle animation to the motion field. And next at the death stage, drag the death animation to the motion field. And at last, the activate state, we will use the death animation again with a little trick. In the inspector, under the motion field, there's a speed variable. With this, we can control the speed of the animation. If we set it to, let's say, 0.5, it will play in slow motion. And if we set it to 2, it will speed up. But here's a little trick. If we set it to minus 1, then if we apply the animation backwards, and if we think about the death animation, imagine it backwards, it will basically stand up, which is exactly what we need at this moment. So just drag the died animation to the motion field. So the last thing we need to do here is connect these states to each other. So right click on the idle state, make transition and select the activate state. Click the transition line and in the inspector disable the has exit time and set the transition duration to zero. It means when we trigger this transition, the activate animation will be played immediately. Under these, at the conditions, add one to the list and, and select the activate trigger. And this is the trigger from the parameters tab. And repeat the same with the death state. So make a transition, select the transition line, disable the exit time and set the transition duration to zero sec. Add the condition to the list and change the activate trigger to the death trigger. With all that set up, all we need to do is tell the animator when we trigger these events. Well, how can we do that? Of course, with the C Sharp script. If you remember one of my previous video, we set up a script for the target dummy. Check it out, the link in the description. So open up this script. This is going to be the target dummy. As you can see, there's the on collision enter function where if the colliding object's tag is bullet, then it writes to the console a message, um, I've been hit. So all we need to do in this case is change the console message to triggering the death state in the animator. If you remember in the second episode, we did something similar with our hands animation. The only difference was that we used float values instead of triggers. So here's a little challenge for you. Stop the video and try to figure it out yourself. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Did you figure it out? Did you find another solution? Let me know in the comments. And here's my approach. First, we need to reference the animator. So serialize field, 
private animator. I'm gonna call it uh, dummy animator. So here, just uh, delete the debug.log message <clears throat> and replace it with a dummy animator that set trigger. And then here we are going to need the uh, death trigger. Don't forget to watch out for the spelling of the parameter's name. So better just to copy it just to make sure. So just like that. And one little thing I would like to change instead of using a bullet tag, change it to weapon. This is because if I want to be able to slay it with, for example, with a sword, it would be strange to tag it as a bullet. Or if I want to use both, then we need another or check in the if statement, for example, bullet. You can do that if you like that. For me, I just like to keep it simple. So I'm just going to delete it. So if you follow me, then don't forget to create a weapon tag and apply it to the sword and also to the bullet. Next we need to set up how can we activate the dummies. So to do that we will need a new function. Let's call it void activate dummy. And here we just need to set the activate trigger. Again it's better just to copy it from the animator. So how can we call this method? Of course, with another C sharp script, and we will attach it to a game object where we are going to have a box collider trigger. So when the player walks into it, it's just going to trigger the activation. But right now we have a problem. If we have multiple target dummies, multiple places, we don't want to activate all of them in the same time. So we need to separate them into chunks and activate them in different trigger areas. So to do that, I will use one of the prefab just for the visual. If we go back, then go to the polygon starter pack prefabs. And here, I'm just going to use this plate, move it up a little. And here at the box collider, I'm just going to set it as a trigger and going to increase its size just to make sure we, when we walk into it, we are definitely hitting the trigger. Okay. And I'm going to add the new script where I'm going to call dummy trigger and open the script. So here just delete the update and the start function. And here we need to store in a variable all the target dummies we want to activate. And for that we need an array of game objects. So again start with serialized field, private game object. And here we just need uh, brackets and now this is a array and I'm gonna name it target dummies and again we are gonna need an untrigger enter and for the logic what we will do is if the player walks into this trigger then it will iterate through all of the game objects what the array contains and trigger the activate trigger through their script so again we are gonna need an if statement and again, use a compare tag. So if the colliding objects tag is going to be player, then we want to iterate through to the array. For this iteration, we will use a for each loop. So the variable we need a game object and the collection is going to be the target dummies array. And then here we need to call the activate dummy function. But right now we can't do that because this is a private void. So we have to set it to public. So uh, here just dummies, the get component, target dummy, dot activate dummy, and this is the function what that we call in. So that's it for the log logic. You can close this up. And in the inspector, select first the target dummy. We need to drag the animator component to the dummy animator field. I'm just going to duplicate it a few times. And here I'm just going to drag the target dummy to the array, the ones that I want to activate. 
if I duplicate it and move it somewhere here and delete these ones and drag the other two to this array then it should activate those two when we walk into this one and don't forget the XR origins tag it needs to be changed to a player now press start and try this out now if I walk into this trigger area these two target dummies get activated and if I use the pistol I can shoot them Check it out, if I walk back into this trigger, it won't enable them again. This is because we don't have any transition line back to the idle or activate state. And if I walk into this trigger area, those dummies getting activated and I can use the sword to slay them. Perfect. So that's it for this video, like if you liked it, if you want more of these videos hit the subscribe button and if you don't want to miss any of them click that notification bell as well. See you in the next one.